If you've been following along with this video series, you've seen the various features and key bindings which I've configured for writing LaTeX documents in NeoVim. Of course, you can find out what all of these are by looking at the different plugins which I have installed, looking onto the GitHub repository for each one to see what each of these plugins does, as well as looking into the mappings.vim and wichkey.vim files for all the different key bindings which I've included. However, going through all of this would take quite a bit of work, and I thought it would be helpful to bring everything together into a single place, and so created this cheat sheet, which goes over all of the basic functions and key bindings which I'm using to write LaTeX documents. I should mention that I'm not going to go over any of the standard Vim bindings, all of which I've maintained, since the standard Vim bindings I find to be extremely usable as they are, requiring really no customization, and rather have just augmented what comes in stock Vim. So let's begin with mappings. So I indicate where this file is, which I have open right here. This is the all the mappings files. And there's not so many really, um, but some deserve mention. So Alt J and Alt K. So this is a way to drag lines and it's in visual select mode. So um, if I'm on this line and I do Shift V to select it, then Alt J will drag down that line um, to wherever I might want to put it. Um, and it's occasionally useful. Uh, and um, yeah, if, if you do say want to select this, say I've, I've moved it up to touch these two lines, I can do, um, instead of moving it through them, say I want to select that block, I can release Alt, uh, select a few more, and then move up, move them all up together. Um, so that's a little bit about Alt J and Alt K. Um, let's undo all of that. Um, Okay, let's go back there. Okay, that's a good spot. Um, okay, better tabbing. So this is also fairly basic, but um, say I select this and I want to indent this. So shift caret will indent it and um, the same in the opposite direction. That's all I have for better tabbing. For display line movements, it's better to demonstrate in a different file. So let's switch projects here. So this is another project I have open. And you'll notice, say I'm, um, yeah, let's go to width. Say I want to go down to the next word just below, so what. If I just press J, I'll dump, jump to the next numbered line. Um, and so that's inconvenient. In order to get to what, I would have to say do forward and then space W and then hit semicolon and jump to, um, you know, that's one way to get there. Um, but it's nice to be able to just move locally inside uh, wrapped text. And so for that, I'm using shift and then the J and K keys. So shift K will go up to width, uh, shift J will go down to what. Um, once I'm on this second display line, if I now press J, it will jump to the second display line of the next numbered line and, and so on. Um, so yeah, these are useful for navigating text. I should say that you know another option would be to just manually uh, break lines. So I would you know create a new line here, and you know I could do it at whatever the 80 character mark or whatever whatever you want given your screen size, um, and and so on. So that you know now if I'm over here with width, um, now I can just press J without holding down Shift to go right down to what since these are distinct, um, these are uh, different numbered lines. However, I think there's good reason not to do this and to see why. So if I were to break all of these lines, say at, at a given uh, you know, character length, um, well, that would be fine maybe for writing in this half screen here. But let's say I wanted to maximize. So, and you know, maybe this is a little too wide for me. Um, so I have this Zen mode. So we can go into Zen mode. And this is of course customizable, but for me this is about, this looks pretty good. Um, so now notice, I mean, if I had broken all of these lines, um, let's actually redo that, um, you know, and if I had gone down the whole 
page. Well, even though I'm in full screen, it wouldn't really matter because they're just the length that they are, um, 80 characters or whatever it happens to be. And, um, and that's a lot less flexible and I think a lot less usable. And I think there's really just no reason um, to give up that flexibility. And so I have maintained, um, I have permitted line wrapping and, and then have these convenient shift J and K to, to move locally. So that's display line movements. Um, windows, buffers, and panes. So I have discussed this in another video, but I think it's worth re-mentioning. So I have two windows open here, um, one and two, and I can create a new one with control space and then C for create. And I can also kill that window with control space K. Um, for cycling through the windows I have open, I can do control space N for next and control space P for previous. And if I do next twice, then it will cycle all the way through. Um, so that's a little bit about moving through Windows, and that's all being run with Tmux. So if you've not installed Tmux, uh, these commands will not work for you. Um, so switching between buffers. So inside each project, so each window here, um, there are these different buffers. And instead of clicking through them, you can tab through them. And then, of course, Shift-Tab will go back, um, as one might expect. So navigating panes. So I'm not using a lot of panes. Um, panes are basically, so this is, we're inside one window, there's a few different buffers, but each buffer can be split into different panes instead of taking up full, um, all of the area of this window, window. So a good example of this is when we open up the Explorer. So say we go space E to open up the Explorer and say, I can't quite read all of this uh, file here which isn't so important in this case, but where to want to, I can hold down um, Alt and then do L, and that just increases the size of that pane. Um, and I can close it back down. Um, and that's, that's uh, some, some indication of how to uh, change the size of panes. However, it's also sometimes useful, I mean, not so much with the Explorer. Um, when I open the Explorer, it hops my cursor in there and I can do whatever I need to and then close it out. Um, but another good example is say I do undo tree, so space U. So for whatever reason, the undo tree does not automatically move my cursor inside the undo tree, um, which is not such a big deal. I rarely use undo tree, but um, if I want to hop in there without using the mouse, then control and then the direction I want to go, H in this case. So now I'm inside and then control L will hop me back. Um, so let's close under tree, space U. Um, another maybe more common instance is say I want to look at the log for um, generating the PDF, so space L for log. So it does bring my cursor in there automatically. And I can close this out with space D. Um, but let's say I go in there and say I just want to leave it open for a little bit. Um, so instead of using the mouse to click into the other pane, I can do Control and now K to jump up. And so this pane will work just as it did before. It's slightly smaller, but, um, but otherwise provide the same functionality. So if I want to close out that log now, I need to hop in there and then space D and it will close out that log. Okay, so that's how to navigate and resize uh, panes. Um, a few sort of stray commands. Um, so save and quit are, of course, very important. So space W I'll be using all the time to save the, the file to my computer. And that will tell the LaTeX builder to update the PDF. And so th this is really the main command I'm using. You know, once I've turned the, the, the LaTeX compiler on, um, space W is, is what I'm using all the time to, to look, see what the changes look like. Um, Quit is maybe deserving of mention where, um, so space Q, it does not just quit, it does not just close one buffer, it, it closes everything. So, and it does save first. So it's really um, the command that I have here for quit, um, if I were to type it into command, is it's write and then QA. So that's really what space Q does, is it writes the file and it quits everything. Okay, so that's that. Um, commenting lines out. So notice this line is commented out. Um, and 
it's often useful to, um, yeah, just be able to, in whatever file you're in, to be able to toggle lines, the, the commenting on and off. And you can do this for a full paragraph. So shift V, select that whole paragraph, and then um, I can comment everything and it will add an additional percent sign. And that's useful because if I wanna uncomment, then it will leave this line commented and I would have to do an additional comment there. That way we don't lose information when we comment an entire paragraph on and off. Okay, cut and paste. Um, it's worth mentioning that the way that Vim is set up, of course, there's many different registers which you can cut and paste into. Um, however, the sort of default one, where if I were to say yank something, so say I go to this line, YY yanks the line. Okay, and then I put, I wanna put it there, hit P. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, let's say before I've put it there, I then delete this line, DD. Okay, the way that Vim is standardly set up, if I were to then press P, instead of the line which I yanked, the last deleted line would show up. However, if I press P, that's not what happens. Uh, the yanked line, not the deleted line shows up. So what happened to that deleted line? Well, it goes into this special place. Um, it goes into the D register. So you would print it just the way you print from any register. So you do shift quote, D, and then P. Um, so that's, that's where that line went. So to make things simple, you can think of it as D is um, deleting things, sends lines to, or whatever text you're deleting, sends it to a special trash can, um, which you can call on if you need to, but most of the time um, I find that I, I, I don't need to so much. Okay, also help. Um, I don't use this a ton. Let's switch into this other project. Um, oops, what's going on here? Um, all kinds of things changed around here. Um, okay. Shit. Uh, Okay, that's good. Um, I do think we have, okay, no, 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 that looks fine. Um, so let's say we want to uh, look at what this command does or this let command. So if I do control and then M, it will open a new buffer and it will tell me a little bit about let. Um, so that's often helpful, um, but let's close out of that with space D and okay switch back into other project okay so multiple cursors i've also covered elsewhere but just to review if i you know i'm anywhere in a word and i do control n it'll select that word and if i do control n again it'll select the next occurrence i can skip that occurrence with control x um, and it will then hop to the the yet further uh, occurrence and control n and so on you can do control p to go back um, and then you can, you know, all the standard Vim commands uh, work once once you've selected all those lines. Um, let's see, so say we have two occurrences selected, so I can do C for change and rewrite with. Um, if I hit escape, then I'm now in normal mode, um, but I have multiple cursors and yeah, I can make additional changes. So occasionally useful, um, sort of a, a hangover from my, my past of using um, an IDE. Okay, so plugins. So file management I cover in some detail in another video, which I will link. Um, I think I'll put the link both here inside this document as well as um, down in the description below. Um, it is worth mentioning though that in opening up, say Control-P, actually this is a bad example, let's go into this project. So if I do Control-P, um, if I type J, well then that searches J. If I wanna scroll through this, I do Control and then J and K. Um, so that's really all, all that I'd like to add there. Um, all right, uh, projects and templates, I also go through in detail in another video, which I'll link below. And the same is true for Git integration and autocomplete. However, there's some further details I'd like to add for autocomplete, which is that um, say I'm autocompleting a word, so I type first, I don't know, yeah, regimentation. Um, so to select that, if I type J, of course that's just gonna insert J. 
Um, so I do control J. So I have this sort of throughout. Um, and then I don't hit enter here because once the word is that I have is selected, just do, I just carry on as if nothing has happened. So space, um, and then, you know, whatever the next word is. Um, okay. And then the same is true if I want to spell check this, I do control S and, you know, I might go to regiment, oops, so J is not what I want to do. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's good. Um, here, let's undo this. So if I do control S, then control J, say down to regimentations, uh, if that's what I wanted. And then if I want, I already have a space and another word, so I would just do exit. Um, and I can carry, I'm back in normal mode, I can carry on. Okay, so that's just a little bit more about autocomplete. Um, one other thing to add is, is a go-to definition. This is pretty useful. So say this hypersection, this is um, a, a, something I have to find. So if I want to see where I have to find that, I can do G and then D. And it goes to where I have to find that command. Um, let's do control O to get back. Um, another nice one that I uh, sometimes use is here, let's do L. So this is something else I have to find. Um, and I can do G, D. And what's nice about that is that, okay, here's where I have to find L, but I've defined a whole bunch of other, these other ones. These are basically just um, uh, cal cal calligraphy type letters. Um, so I can add another one of these by say doing Y, Y to yank the line and then P. And then, you know, I can hop to the, um, hop inside and yeah, I don't know, whatever, change, change that to whatever I, I want it to be. Um, so. So that's a pretty useful one. Um, let's undo that though, and let's go back. Um, okay. So that's all I have for COC, everything else I cover elsewhere. Um, auto pairs and surround, I also go through in detail elsewhere, and I'll provide the links below. And the same is true of LaTeX support. Um, Markdown, um, I don't have too much more to add, but um, yeah, say we go into Let's go into, yeah, tab into this one. Um, so if I do spacebar and then M for markdown, here's a few different commands you can run. So if I do M again, then it will, um, let's do spacebar M, M. Um, so it will open up, um, it will render this inside my browser. And um, I don't know, it's sometimes nice. I mean, this in this context, it's fine the way it looks inside Vim. Um, I can also do space M and then S for select. So I can put a little tick there and it automatically updates. It puts a little tick over here. So, so that's, that's a nice thing to see. Um, and if I wanted to kill that uh, M and then, you know, of course it's not so hard to click kill over here, but um, I press K and it will close that window. Okay, so that is a little bit about markdown. Um, a few other miscellaneous odds and ends. Um, I've already shown the undo tree and Zen mode, um, but uh, search within document is a pretty useful one. So, you know, the Vim way to search is you do slash, and then you can type whatever, say, um, let's do methodology. Yeah, okay, so there's methodology. Um, if I do enter, well, then that's what I'm searching for. And then I can do N to go to the next one and shift N to go to the previous and so on. So you know, that's one way to get around. Um, however, you end up sort of being pulled all over the place as you hop around through your document. Um, and it's nice to have one alternative, which I have under space and then F. So this is using Fuzzy Finder to search through my document. And um, so now let's do method, yeah, methodology. Okay, so these are all the occurrences of methodology throughout my paper. And I can use control J to scroll through them in K. Um, and yeah, if I find one that I like, I can, or I wanna look at, I can then hit return and jump to that one. So that's uh, pretty useful. And the last one that is deserving of some mention is if you say, let's switch projects. This is my configuration project. And if you make some change and you wanna update it, uh, well, you'd save the file, uh, that's a good start. And then if you were to close NeoVim and then reopen, well, it would have to look back up all your configuration files and it would, it would you know, assume the new change. Um, however, it's annoying to have to close 
NeoVim and reopen all the time. And so under space and then shift R for reload. So that reloads all the configuration files. Um, and it's a good way to just be able to quickly check to see if the new addition you've made, whatever the key binding is, or you've added a new plugin or you know whatever it is, um, has been, is working the way that you want it to. So those are the basics. Um, it's really, this covers most of the features which I've added. Um, and it's not so much really, um, may seem overwhelming, but of course you don't need to use any of these features. Uh, you can turn them off if you like, um, or just forget about them. But, um, but nevertheless, these are the features that uh, I've included and find convenient for writing LaTeX documents.